Shalom and welcome to another time of Israel's Hope Bible Church. This message is for Wednesday, the 17th of November, 2021. It's our third in the Discerning the Times series. We're going to talk today, continue talking today about rising anti-Semitism and Israel's last days. We're going to be looking at various passages of Scripture. We're going to be looking particularly at Matthew chapter 24, verses 1 to 16. We'll be reading them, and I'm going to try and make some applications to that uh, from uh, my comments that I have prepared here. And this, again, is uh, all in relation to the fact that we have continued to receive all kinds of interesting information from all kinds of interesting people trying to make a connection between pandemic, uh, vaccines, uh, you name it, uh, to insist that we are in the end times and we are on the cusp of uh, having the Antichrist revealed to us. So we need to approach these things with uh, an amount of biblical knowledge. And that's what the attempt and my hope is today to do with you. Uh, before we just, uh, say any more, let's stop, let's pray, and ask the Holy Spirit to direct us in what we say and do here today. So, Father God, we do ask you for your wisdom in all that is said and done, so that you would receive all the glory and honor. We thank you for Jesus, for eternal life, and everything that you provide for now and into the future. And we pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. So follow with me, please, as we read Matthew chapter 24, starting at verse 1. Jesus went out and departed from the temple, and his disciples came forward to show him the buildings of the temple. And Jesus said to them, See you not all these things? Verily I say to you, there shall not be left here one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately, saying, Tell us when all these things shall be, and what shall be the sign of your coming? And the end of the world. And Jesus answered and said to them, Take heed that no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. And you shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you be not troubled. For all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation shall rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom. And there shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in diverse places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted, and shall kill you. And you shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. And then shall many be offended, and shall betray one another, and shall hate one another. And many false prophets uh, shall rise, and shall deceive many. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. But let the, he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all the nations, and then shall the end come. And when you therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet, stand in the holy place, whoso readeth, let him understand. Those are not Jesus' words, that little uh, phrase at the end there. They were added. Then let them which be in Judea flee to the mountains, and he goes on and on after that. We're going to look at this portion of Matthew 24, um, the second half of it, at a, another date. The continued de debate about the pandemic, vaccines, the end of the world. Our perspective here at Israel's Hope is that the Jewish perspective on end times is too, too often ignored. God can foreshadow end events, and however, the day of the Lord is about Israel, God's judgment of the world, but Israel at the central point of it. This is not about the Antichrist. This is not about pandemics. This is not about other like events. God is going to hold to account the world and their treatment of God's people, Israel. Now, we need to understand something about where Jesus is. Let's set the context. This is right at the end of his ministry. This is after the last Passover he has celebrated. They've gone out of the city. And we must understand by inference, they probably have passed by the temple. They're on their way up to the Mount of Olives where this happens. And they passed by the buildings and they were in the midst of being still being restored. At this point, this is anywhere between 25, 26, and 33 A.D. And the final restoration of Herod's great temple did not conclude until 64 A.D. 
And so the, the disciples say to Jesus, look at this magnificent temple. Is there anything like it? And Jesus said, not one stone shall remain standing. You read in Josephus' account of what the Romans did the day after the fires stopped raging in the city and when in 70 AD, they came, the soldiers did, with their short swords and they uh, pulled away the footing stones of what was left of the burned out building, the temple, to get at the gold. Not one stone was left standing upon another. You can read about that. Since the Babylonians, though, came in 586 BC, destroyed the city, destroyed the temple, and took Israel captive to Babylon. Israel has not had full autonomy over her capital cities. In fact, her capital city, Jerusalem. In fact, as Jesus refers to it in Luke 21, 24, all these things that are happening in the world around us are going to continue until the times of the Gentiles are concluded. And the times of the Gentiles began with the Babylonian conquest of Jerusalem in 586 and continues on today. You see, Israel has not had full autonomy over her capital city since 586 BC. If you were to go to uh, Jerusalem today, there's the Jewish quarter, there's the uh, Muslim quarter, there's the Christian quarter, there's that quarter. Uh, it's, it's a divided city. And then there's the, the division as well. The uh, Palestinian Authority wants to declare Jerusalem as their capital. And so you see the, the problems that exist there and will continue to exist in Jerusalem until the times of the Gentiles are concluded. When will that happen? When Jesus comes back. Since Israel went back to her land after the Babylonian captivity, they went back under Persian authority. And that was in 539 B.C. It was then passed to uh, Greek authority between 333 and 323 B.C. And when the Grecian Empire, Alexander's Empire, fell into four parts, well, it, it became a, a major battleground for the next hundred or so years until the Romans began to flex their muscles. And in 170 to 165 B.C., somewhere in that period of time, Antiochus Epiphanes had gone from the Seleucid Empire north to the Ptolemaic Empire in the, corn, the Horn of Africa area to confront the, the Ptolemaic Empire, which was one of the former portions of Alexander's great Greek Empire. And he met up with Romans who said, go home, we're in charge now. And that makes up what we call the Hanukkah story, because Antiochus went back into Jerusalem and he desecrated the temple. That was the first abomination that makes desolate, but it isn't the abomination that makes desolate. And the reason for it is this, that if you were to read the trilogy of chapters in Zechariah 12, 13, and 14, and read the events of the book of Revelation alongside of that as well, read what Daniel the prophet has to tell us in Daniel chapter 9, verses 24 to 27, then you know this for sure that all the nations of the world have not yet come up against Israel and will not come up against Israel until it's time. Now, when will that time be? Well, that time will be when Israel has, uh, is at the center of world uh, opinion and uh, has been guaranteed peace by the Antichrist for a seven-year period of time. Read Daniel chapter 9, verses 24 to 27. Let's look at this passage in Matthew 24, just some highlights of it today to try and understand why is anti-Semitism rising in the world today? Well, we look here, first, in the first two verses, we've already discussed how Jesus says that this temple will be destroyed. It was destroyed. It was immediately destroyed within at least 30 years under the Romans in the summer of 70 AD during the... Um, Jewish wars between uh, the Jewish uprising against Rome, 66 to 73 AD. And there is Jesus, and he says to them on, um, uh, as he's being asked the question, where, when will these things be? When will the end of the world be? And Jesus said, don't take heed that no man deceive you. 
One of the biggest problems we have today in, in trying to answer questions about Bible prophecy is people who think they have answers for things and they don't have answers. People who are making insistent assertions, and I, I, I want to double that, I, uh, that description there, insistent assertions that the current pandemic is all part of the end times and the taking of a vaccine is the mark of the beast. It is impossible for that to be. And the reason that it is, is that you and I have not been uh, chosen to receive the mark of the beast. If you are a follower of the Lord Jesus alive in the world today, the Antichrist is not here yet. Even if he is, he is not being allowed to do anything. And why? Because Second Thessalonians chapter 2 makes it quite clear that the one who will let, will not let, until he we are taken out of the way. That is an uh, illusion or a mention of the church being taken out. Now, when is the church taken out? Well, in 1 Thessalonians 4, 13 to 18, in the rapture. Then in chapter 5 of that same letter, Paul talks about the day of the Lord that comes after that. So you see, all these assertions that we are in these end times now, there it's an improbable assertion it's actually a lie. And the reason that it is, is because if you look at the scriptures, you see that the church has to be removed from here in order for those things to happen. And that has not happened yet. So until that happens, we have a responsibility. And that is to be Matthew chapter 28, 18, 19, and 20 Christians. Now, here are some of the things that Jesus warns about that will happen in the last days. Verse 7, nation shall rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom, famines, pestilences, earthquakes in diverse places. Do you know that since 1950, there has been a 500% increase in earthquakes worldwide? I do not believe that that is just some uh, easy come by day uh, event. I think that we, these are the, the foreshadowing of things that we are seeing happening in the world around us. And because we're seeing these things happening, it is God's way of trying to get us ready to warn others and to make us alert to the fact that we're on the cusp, perhaps on the cusp, of the end of time. But until we are taken out, our responsibility is to share the gospel with other people. Will be the, these things here are the beginning of sorrows in verse 8 of, of Matthew 24. But here's the important thing. I'm a contextualist when it comes to the scriptures. And so I always ask the five W questions. Who, what, when, where, and why? Any good journalist would ask those questions, and I dare say there aren't a lot of those around anymore. But the who, what, when, where, and why questions that are asked here have us to understand who is speaking? It's Jesus. Who is he speaking to? His disciples. They're Hebrews. They're Jewish people. These are things he says that are going to happen to you in the last days, to your people in the last days. Look at verse 9. Then they shall deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you, and you shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. Now, in the immediate sense, many of those men were given up. And they were hated for the namesake of Jesus, but not by all nations. We are at a place in history right now where Israel is being vilified on almost a daily, weekly, and monthly way. If you are attending at the United Nations right now, this is the time of year that all of the resolutions on an annual basis are brought up to the UN telling the world that we condemn Israel for, and then the list starts. We always find it fascinating that it's only Israel that is condemned for all of these so-called things wrong. Regardless of what those resolutions say, the point is this, is that, as they say in Israel, the United Nations hasn't done much for us since 1948. We call them the United Nothing. They just ignore what they come up with on those annual basis. But it's the ploy of the enemy himself, turning world opinion against Israel and consequently against Jewish people, wherever you may find them. 
After the Gaza incursion this year, when the rockets fired in and Israel's retaliation, I can tell you that here in Canada, the unbelievable attacks upon the Jewish community here just skyrocketed. And why? Because Satan hates Israel, and his desire is to destroy Israel wherever he can find them. The Antichrist will come in the last days and convince all of Israel, I have peace for you, sign this seven-year treaty, and you can build your temple. And he will convince all the Jewish people that they should go back to their homeland and live there in safety that he guarantees for them. But the ultimate attempt by him in that event is to get all the Jewish people in one place for one reason and one reason only. Because in the middle of the tribulation period, he will turn the, tie, the tables on them and say, okay, you want to worship your God in the temple? You'll worship me because I am God. This is the abomination of desolation, as Jesus says in Matthew 24, 15, spoken of by Daniel the prophet. Now we have some lessons to learn from this, and these are them. These events of Matthew 24, 1 to 15, speaks of events that have to do with Israel in the last days. The major event will be in the middle of this time period, as per Matthew 24, verse 15, the abomination of desolation. This is also referred to in Daniel 9, 27, Daniel 11, 31, and Daniel 12, 11. Antiochus Epiphanes foreshadowed this in 165 BC when he did offer an unclean animal on the altar in the temple. We know that that was not the end because as Zechariah chapter 12, 13, and 14 tell us, the whole world has not yet come up against Jerusalem. So, as Jesus warns in Matthew 24, when he says here, uh, they'll tell you that the Antichrist, that I'm here, the Antichrist is there, false prophets, verse 11, etc. What we have now is when someone tells you that Antichrist is behind the COVID vaccines, it points to a one world government happening now. We, the followers of Jesus, are still here. And until we are taken out and made um, to be removed from this world in the rapture, our responsibility is to not follow after false teaching. Our responsibility is to go out and make disciples of all the nations. It says here in this uh, passage, Matthew 24, that the gospel will go out to all the nations. And the reason that that happens, as verse 14 speaks to that, is because 144,000 Jewish evangelists will be struck out by God in the last days, sent out, not struck out, excuse me, sent out by God in the last days, and they will bring the gospel to the Gentile world. Yes, we're still living in the times of the Gentiles, but it's one of the most exciting times in all of human history. And if you have an appreciation and an understanding of the scriptures from within its cultural and historical context, then you have all the assurances of knowing this, that God's coming back in his time and according to his plan, not according to the machinations of men and other people, whoever, who are saying to you, don't take a vaccine. It's the mark of the beast. This is Israel's Hope Bible Church Online. We exist, teach the scriptures from this vantage point. We're a faith ministry. We trust God to meet our needs. There are some very pressing needs right now. We're looking to raise at least another $10,000 on top of regular giving from now until the end of the year. We've had a lot of extra expense in the last half of the year because of the need to get some um, in-house um, bookkeeping, you might say, up to date regarding our own government registrations and everything here to do in Canada. Now, these are annual things that have to be done, but there were a lot of things that needed doing this year as the government was uh, has made certain and various changes. So if you would see fit to pray that the Lord might send what is needed in the next um, six weeks until we come down to the end of the year. Our, our goal, our desire is to raise that $10,000 between now and December 31st so we can end the year with all the bills paid and have at least a good start into 2022. Our Bible studies will be restarting in Montreal. 
uh, later this month, November, and we are looking to start up our, our study group again in Toronto. It's time to get going again, and we're going to be getting going, at least here in Canada. So pray with us as the Lord opens doors for ministry. The government of Ontario just announced yesterday, in fact, that there's been a, a partial slowdown in the COVID reopening. And it has, it has to do with a slight uptick in, in infections and identified things of that nature. But we are trusting God that the doors will remain open so that we are going to be able to do the things that God has given us to do. So would you pray with us about that? If you are in the USA, you can give a gift by making out a check to I Hope USA. Put on the memo line, Grossman Support Canada. You can send it to I Hope USA, 2330 Norton Lane, North Bloomfield, Ohio, 44450. You'll find the USA address on our webpage, and uh, our webpage is www.ihopecanada.org. If you are in Canada or elsewhere in the world and would like to give a gift to Israel's Hope Ministries, you can do that by going to our webpage, www.ihopecanada.org. You can give through PayPal. You can give by an e-transfer. Only in Canada can an e-transfer be given. Um, or you can send a check in the mail to our Canadian P.O. Box. Make out the check to Israel's Hope Canada or I Hope Canada, whichever way. Thank you for looking in today, both live on Facebook and those who will look in on our YouTube channel at a later date. Thank you for everything you do, and particularly for praying with us. Let's close our time in prayer. Father God, we do thank you today that your Son, Jesus, has paid the price for all sin, and that we have an eternity promised to be with you. Until then, have us to be the people responsible to share the gospel of others, and we share, pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. So until next time, we say, Shalom.